wearing U.S. uniforms during the Battle of the Bulge and sentenced to death. In films made in 1944 but just released, you're about to see the execution of the trio, Billing, Bernas, and Schmidt. The end of the war brought celebration and retribution. Crowds outside Rome's court took the law into their own hands. Goretta was eventually dragged out, thrown on the ground and kicked until unconscious. Thrown in the Tiber and beaten to death with oars. Into the courtyard of Fort Bravetta goes Pietro Caruso, accompanied by his executioners, the Carabinieri. A priest hears his last words. This man, paying with one life, took many lives. There is still a long road of blood ahead in Europe. Retribution culminated in the Nuremberg trials. 21 leading Nazis were hung. More than 20,000 others were executed by the Allies. The US government told the world of the horrors of the Nazi gas chambers. However, it seems likely that those Nazi gas chambers were inspired by the US government. In 1924, prison officials in Nevada tested the invention of an army medic, D.A. Turner. They strapped prisoner John Gee into a chair in an airtight chamber and dropped cyanide pellets into a bucket to make him die. By 1992 in California, the process hadn't changed. I don't know how long uh, Robert Alton Harris was conscious, and I don't know how much he felt. I mean, it took him 20 minutes to die. Mike, if you saw today, would you label as cruel and unusual punishment? That would be a, a, a value judgment I don't know if I could make. Uh, it is not a clean, quick, humane way of killing somebody. The horror of Harris's 20-minute execution was the death knell for the U.S. gas chamber. In 1994, a district court judge shut down the San Quentin gas chamber, ruling, execution by lethal gas is inhumane and has no place in civilized society. Another form of chemical killing has replaced the gas chamber in a new wave of U.S. executions. Lethal injection is the most extreme example of this century's attempt to make execution look like medicine. Prisoners are killed on hospital trolleys. A machine releases poison and takes the responsibility for killing from human hands. A curtain opens to allow witnesses to see execution as medical theater. The poison needle uses a heart-stopping drug preceded by an anesthetic to kill. In 1982, prison officials assisted by a doctor injected 40-year-old Charles Brooks, the first American to die by lethal injection. Brooks was killed by a technique perfected 45 years before in Nazi Germany. Lethal injection as an execution technique was invented by Dr. Karl Brandt, personal physician and close friend to Adolf Hitler. Brandt first used this technique on those deemed medically unfit for life in 1939. He was officially authorized to implement a program of mercy deaths in a letter signed by Hitler. Brandt assembled a team of doctors to carry out the T4 program. Today's lethal injection techniques began with the killing of 10,000 children. The Germans used a drug, phenol, that stopped the heart. The doctors drove to sanatoriums throughout Germany, Austria and Poland. In 1940, Brandt conducted an experiment to find the most humane form of death. He compared lethal injection with gassing, the technique that had been used to kill American prisoners for the previous 16 years. In early 1940 in Brandenburg, 
Brandt personally injected two children with poison and noted it took them 20 minutes to die. His colleague, Dr. Victor Brack, gassed 20 handicapped adults in a room disguised as a shower. It took only five minutes to kill the adults in Brack's gas chamber. Brandt declared gassing the most humane form of death. Six centres were equipped with gas vans, gas chambers and crematoriums to burn the bodies of the executed. In six years, German doctors killed 275,000 retarded people by gassing or lethal injection. In the US today, doctors are again recruited for an execution programme using lethal injection. In the decade from 1982, 133 prisoners have been killed. Some have been retarded, and many mentally ill. The legacy of Dr. Brandt lives on in 23 states of America today. At the turn of the century, two of America's most famous inventors competed to bring new technologies to death. Thomas A. Edison was the inventor of the electric light bulb and champion of direct current electricity supply. His rival, George Westinghouse, favoured alternating current electricity. In 1889, a government commission in New York decided electrocution was more humane than hanging. Electrocution began using Westinghouse's AC current, much to the annoyance of Edison, who built different electric chairs and filmed this execution in 1901. The novel crossover of technology and death spread like a craze. Electric chairs were installed in more than a dozen states. The electric chair became a celebrity. Newspapers vied to photograph the first woman to die in the chair, the front page image taken with a camera strapped to a shoe. States even commissioned mobile chairs. Former criminal Jimmy Thompson operated Mississippi's portable chair, killing nine men in nine months in 1940. After a hundred years and more than a thousand victims, the American technique is now steeped in ritual. It's not of the execution. This is Virginia State Electric Chair. Time is 11 o'clock. Prisoners brought in and strapped in the electric chair. Sergeant Dye here will explain how the man is buckled in and how he's wired for the execution. <clears throat> it made us white sit in, buckle in, secure in the chair. The first thing to be connected and put on will be the leg piece. The leg piece has spring action, is fitted firmly into the inmate's leg. The cable is inserted and tightened with the wing nut, finger tight. Second step, the mask is inserted over the inmate's face, which covers his forehead, nose, and lips. Only thing that exposes is his chin and lower half of his neck. The backrest has been adjusted so that you have a firm seat in the chair. Third step, the helmet is inserted on the inmate's head, also has spring action, which gives you a tight fit. The strap, chin strap is inserted around his chin and connected. At that point, the connecting cables is inserted, also finger tight. Final thing that is done, all the straps are checked to make sure that there's no slack and the belts are tight. Things to watch for. An inmate with a larger body build will take more amperage to kill him. He will smoke extremely due to the size of his bill. The smell is pertinent. Things to do, put Vaseline in your nostrils, and you can use the Q-tip to get it out. <laughs>